Welcome to Soccer Gaming and welcome back to the channel where you will find helpful guides, tips and tricks, and franchise rebuilds on MLB The Show 23. And in this episode, we're going to be covering the Team Affinity programs. I released a video earlier in the week um, about March to October and if it is worth it for Team Affinity, but I wanted to fully encompass Team Affinity and break down how to get there, how to get to 100% the quickest way possible. So if you'd like to watch that, stick around. So to try to break down team affinity in general, basically what you need to do is you need to get to 150,000 team affinity points basically to get to choose your AL Central player. And there is other things you're going to get along the way that are going to help you rebuild and everything, but you have to get that to 150,000 to unlock everything and to complete um, the team affinity. So to do that in the top left corner, you will see how many team affinity points you currently have. I currently have 128,500. Your number might be different, but we're going to be getting more team affinity points by doing these tasks that are down below. And I'm going to break down how to do them and everything. And then I'm going to tell you the fastest way of completing them. That way you can kind of double dip and make sure that the time you're spending doing team affinity, um, you're getting XP and everything everywhere else. So first thing is the moments. Now everything is going to say AL central on it. That's just because that's the one I chose. You have to do AL East, AL central, AL West, NL East, NL central, NL West, all of which this uh, this way works and you, you will complete it pretty quickly if you just do it this way. So the AL Central one, you're going to do the moments. The very first thing you're going to do is the moment you're going to get 5,000 team affinity points, which will get you all the way to this one where you're starting to unlock cards. And the reason you want to do that is there's missions down below that you need those cards unlocked to be able to use and get parallel XP for them to get more team affinity later so there's a moment you want to knock those out and then we're going to do be doing the missions and i wouldn't necessarily try to do these um if there's a point where it's like well i need an extra 5,000 team affinity am i really close on one of these missions to completing it can i put a whole team of royals on the on the field to get my parallel xp so i get the 5,000 so i can go unlock another card if that's the case so you know do that but this is just going to kind of come as you're playing. So I wouldn't necessarily focus on trying to do this over and over again. It's kind of a waste of time because you really don't get that many uh, team affinity points for the parallel XP that you earn. 2,500 parallel XP is a lot. Even if it's like six or seven players contributing to that, that's still a lot of XP and a lot of time and team affinity points that you get out of it just really aren't worth it. This is more of one of those things like it's you get this passively while doing and completing the other things. Then there is the captain stat missions and all of this are again cards you're going to get along the way. You're going to throw them in your lineup and do whatever these tell you. So for like the um, this one, Miggy needs 10 hits. I have six so far. Uh, Zach Greenkey needs nine inning pitched. Already did that. Uh, Liam Hendricks had three saves, did that. So on and so forth. Just make sure you're throwing them in your lineup and trying to complete these as well because it's a little extra team affinity points to go um, to help you go. Then there is the henchman missions. And this is where I'm talking about these that you unlock. You're going to use them later on. So you, if you unlock Greg Holland and um, Yoan Moncada, there are going to be missions for them, and they're right here in the henchman. You're going to go, and you're going to find the hall in here, and you're going to see, oh, I need 600 parallel XP with them. I throw them in a couple of games, and boom, 3,500 team affinity points for them. All the hitters are 200, and all the pitchers are 600 team affinity. So as you're going through here and doing these, make sure that you're trying to complete these because they will definitely help your team affinity. And early on, this is going to be kind of a place where you need to unlock things to get further um, into the game. Game. Then there is the mini seasons voucher exchange, which is repeatable. Anytime you do one of the um, mini seasons, you get a voucher. You come in here, you put this voucher in and boom, you get some uh, get 4000 points there. And then if you exchange five season one vouchers um, for the mini seasons, then you're going to get 20,000 team affinity points doing that. Um, 
honestly, honestly, it takes a long time to complete these, and I really don't feel like they're worth it. You can use mini seasons and kind of come in here and do a couple of these, but mini seasons actually takes quite a long time if you go through it and play every game and everything. So it's it, as far as t time goes spent team affinity wise, mini seasons really not the place to get that done. But if you do complete a mini seasons, make sure you exchange it and get the team affinity points. The next one is the exchanges where you can exchange players from the AL central and do that. And every point is worth something and you're going to throw them in here and exchange them. I wouldn't do this early on in the game lifespan because you're going to need a lot of these players um, to complete um, a lot of other programs and stuff. So I wouldn't do the exchange right now. Um, later on in the season, though, when you have thousands and thousands of cards, cards exchanges um, could be very helpful. The next one is the Central Showdown. There's a Central Showdown, there's an East Showdown, and there's a West Showdown. So if you do the Central, it covers both Central and the AL Central and the NL Central. So if you complete it, it will do it for both of the Central Divisions. Same thing here with the uh, Conquest. The Conquest will cover the AL Central and the NL Central, and I'll show you that here in a second. So if you're wanting to do the showdown and beat the final boss, you're going to get 15,000 team affinity points for both divisions, and it's broken down this way. So like, if you are in the East, you're going to get the 15,000, so 30,000 total um, just 15,000 split up between the AL and the NL side. So you got the East central and West. And if you're looking for how to find those, you just come over here to single player modes, go to showdown and they're right here. Um, the team affinity ones are going to be the ones that you want to do for this team affinity. Next place to look is the conquest. Conquest is the same exact way where there's going to be a central. There's going to be a team affinity season one central, a team affinity season one east and a season one west and that breaks it down and same thing if you complete that if you complete all of those which is found by going the single player going to conquest and then finding the one you need if you beat that and you get the points it's going to go to both the al and nl side so that's what you're going to need to play. And then there's March to October, which I did a whole video on and if it's worth it and all of that good stuff. Um, if you haven't watched that video, it's d uh, pinned probably in the comment d section down below. Go ahead and watch that. I went through and broke down how long it took me, how many, how much team affinity points you can get on what difficulty. Um, time wise is it worth investing your time all of that stuff in a previous video but needless to say yes it is it is worth the time to do once per division and i'll show you that here in a second so now that we know how to get all the team affinity points you're asking well, i want to do it the quickest way possible i don't want to waste 30 hours doing this when i could do it in 20 hours so so what you're going to want to do first is you're going to want to complete these moments just get them done get them knocked out i know it's only a thousand apiece but they're pretty easy to tally three hits with elro jimenez and stuff like that they're pretty easy to get done they're pretty quick it might take you five minutes six minutes to get all of those done then the next thing we're going to want to knock out is going to be the showdown. You want to try to get the showdown done so you get the 15,000 team affinity, and that will put you up to 20,000 at this point, and you're going to be unlocking several players along the way. You're going to get these players, live players, um, more of these players, which are good to help you, and again, those are going to unlock more and more. And the reason I say that is because you're going to want to use them in the conquest when you're battling out. Now, before you do the conquest, I would suggest March to October. The reason I suggest that is it took me about 10 hours to do March to October and I ended up getting, I ended up doing an all-star. We won the world series and everything and it ended up being about 72,500 team affinity points, which is a lot. So you've already done the showdown for 15. You've already done the moments for five. So you're looking at 20, uh, thousand team affinity points then you do march to october that's seventy five thousand or seventy two thousand so now you're looking at what eighty two thousand team affinity points so you're unlocking all of these down below which all of these players that you're unlocking in these cards all these ones that you're selecting you're going to go ahead and throw them in your lineup and then run the conquest the reason i tell you that 
is while you're running through the conquest, you have all these players in your lineups. They are getting these missions completed. The team build missions are getting completed. These team stat missions are getting completed. Make sure that you're throwing them in in the right spot. So don't just use Hendrix no matter what. Make sure you're only using them when saves are available. Same thing with the henchman missions. You're just getting parallel XP with all these players. And by doing that, you're going to complete a lot of these missions. And you're going to complete a couple of these missions here as well. So that's going to bring you to the 25,000 that you get from that. So at that point, we're already over 100,000. And then from there on out, it's just completing these missions and doing all of these things. Or if you have a lot of um, stuff to exchange, you can do the exchanges here. I mean, that's how you're going to do it, though. You're going to be doing the moments first, the, sh the showdown. Do it March to October. You can do March to October with any team in the AL Central or any team in the division that you're doing. Uh, make sure you select your team there. Go through, do it. It's going to be about 72500 if you do it on All-Star. It's over. I think it's over 80000 if you do it on Hall of Fame. And honestly, I wouldn't suggest doing it on Legend just because like the points for how hard it's going to be is honestly really not worth it. So go ahead and do that, and you will get a ton of Team Affinity. As you've seen, I've done all of that, and I haven't even done the showdown yet. I haven't even completed the showdown, and I have 128,500 Team Affinity by just knocking out March to October, and then by putting those players in my conquest and completing them and getting their missions done here, as you can see. And the big one is like the team builder. Like I said, they're just going to keep building and going as you go, and you're going to get 5,000 team affinity points every once in a while, which is nice. So that being said, you're going to need to do that for all of the divisions again. The single player mode, if you go here and do conquest and showdown, they both cover the AL side and this NL side. They're basically West division. So Team Affinity Season 1 West. So it, when you beat this, you will get the points in the um, AL West and the NL West. You'll get them in both sides. Same thing with doing Single Player Showdown. If you complete it in the East, as you can see here, the two divisions, the AL East and the NL East below, you're going to get it in both sides. So you're basically going to get double the points or half the well, you're going to get basically the points per division, but you're only having to do it once to get basically double the points. So I hope this was helpful in guiding you through the team affinity. Um, the quickest way of getting that all done, you're going to put about 15 to 20 hours into it before you're able to kind of finish it up. And when I say that, I'm talking about 10 hours-ish for... March to October, and then I'm talking to probably another hour, hour and a half for the showdown, uh, maybe two hours on the showdown, so you're at 12 hours there, and you're almost at 100,000 um, parallel XP, and again, you'll, or uh, XP, and you're almost at 100,000 team affinity points, which you're going to need 150,000, and the rest is going to just be, be playing with the players and stuff like that, which you're going to kind of get passively while doing other programs and other things as well, but it'll take you probably about 20 hours to complete each of these if you have any questions about that please comment them down below i will do my best to try to answer them as quickly as possible if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you give it a big thumbs up also feel free to hit that red subscribe button so that you guys don't miss out on the rest of the mlb show content coming out very soon till next time slacker out